everyone, it's your travel gal, Allie, and I am continuing my Chicago neighborhood series with a visit to Andersonville. So far in this series, we have visited Hyde Park and Little Village, but today I'm taking you to this fun, funky Northside neighborhood. In today's video, I'll be showing you my favorite spots to grab a bite to eat, the best local boutiques to shop at, plus a magical destination that you absolutely have to see for yourself. But before we get into all of my recommendations, I did just want to give you a little bit of history and some information that I think might be helpful to you before you visit Andersonville. However, if you want to skip all of that, you can head to this timestamp right here and get right into my half day itinerary. And if you want even more recommendations on what to do in Andersonville and some of my other favorite Chicago neighborhoods, head to the link in the description to get your hands on my Chicago neighborhood guide. You'll find Andersonville on the north side of Chicago, just west of Lake Michigan. And even though we are in Chicago, this neighborhood remains one of the most concentrated areas of Swedish heritage in the US. This guy's kind of a dead giveaway, huh? Early 1900, as far as Swedish population in a large city, it was Stockholm, Chicago, and then Gothenburg, which is now our largest second largest city in Sweden. In the 19th century, Swedish farmers moved north to what is now Andersonville, and the migration continued through the 20th century. But after the fire, you couldn't build wood houses down in the center part of Chicago. So they moved further north. This was very open area, obviously at the time in 1871, but slowly, just like today, when one person from one ethnic community moves to an area, everybody else sort of flocks to that area. Now, aside from its Swedish roots, Andersonville is also home to one of Chicago's largest LGBTQ communities. This charming neighborhood is almost entirely made up of independent restaurants and shops, which is why many locals refer to it as the shop local capital of Chicago. recommend starting off your visit with a Chicago greeter tour. And what's so great about these free tours is they can be totally customized based on your interests and they're led by expert locals who really give you an authentic flavor for the neighborhood. Another great option, if you'd like to learn even more about the neighborhood's Swedish heritage, is to head to the Swedish American Museum. Here you can check out the museum's rotating gallery space, their Dream of America permanent exhibit, and take part in their various events. Just be sure to check out their website for a list of what's coming up. Andersonville is home to some of the coolest and most unique boutiques in the city. And while there's no shortage of shops to choose from, I'm gonna walk you through some of my favorites. First up, Raygun, a shop dedicated to making the world a better place with the help of graphic t-shirts, mugs, and, well, just about anything you can screen print on. You'll find everything from face masks to books with many of the products giving back to organizations that support equality, a clean environment, and public education. Next, we're headed to The Wooden Spoon, a shop packed with all your culinary essentials. And while their cooking classes were a mainstay prior to the pandemic, The Wooden Spoon is now offering knife sharpening until they're able to safely welcome in students. Be sure to check their website to learn when classes will start up again. We're gonna round out our shopping adventure at Four Sided, a gift shop that sucks you in from the moment you step through the door. Known for its custom framing, vintage finds, and indie cards, this is one of my favorite spots to get one-of-a-kind gifts for friends, family, and uh, let's be honest, myself. And if you get hungry, just head on over to Clark Street where you've got your pick of locally owned restaurants, craft breweries, and delicious bakeries. But let me personally recommend Lost Larsen if you're looking to try some Scandinavian sweets with a modern twist. Now the bakery has taken up the mantle as the go-to spot for hand-rolled cinnamon rolls, freshly baked breads, and classic Swedish pastries. And honestly, their sweets are so delicious. But let's say you're in the mood for some traditional Swedish glog. Then you gotta check out Simon's Tavern. Opened in 1934, Simon's is the fourth oldest bar in Chicago and has a history that dates back to Prohibition. It still has a speakeasy in the basement of the bar that operated from 1929 to 1933 and the same artworks on the wall and the same door with the original 
like gold leaf paint on it that says NN Club, members only, still downstairs. And aside from being the local watering hole back in the day, Simon's had a pretty lucrative side hustle. So Simon decides, well, all the people who'd made him wealthy, he built a bar like this so they could come in and feel like the rich people, because they were all suffering. But now that they were getting jobs, most places would take a percentage of the check. They could come here, he put word on their side, come here on Friday to catch your check, I'll have a free sandwich for you and I won't take any of your money. So this door is about 300 pounds in this line with 12 gauge steel and three panes of bulletproof glass you can see from the inside here. And this is not a door you want to get your finger stuck in, it will cut them off. Even the whole outside wall to the bar is lined with 12 gauge steel. He opened up May of 34, by December was cashing over $14,000 worth of people's payroll checks in the bar. So three quarters of a million dollars in today's money. So he came up with a system to leave only so much cash in here. When he was running on cash, his son would come downstairs because he'd ring a buzzer for the apartment. Roy Lundberg would come down and Simon would remove a panel here and an exchange of money. When you visit, ask nicely and I'm sure the owner Scott would be happy to give you a tour. And now before you leave, you absolutely have to see the Chicago Magic Lounge. You guys are not going to believe this place. Follow me inside. What this place is all about is Chicago's history of magic. Um, a lot of people don't know, but Chicago has a little history uh, built in with magic. Chicago's got uh, you know, a history of blues, history of comedy, but we also have a little history of magic, and it's bar magic, it's restaurant magic, it's uh, up close, it's personal, it's in a place that you wouldn't think you'd find magic, and it's by magicians who don't normally look like magicians. The Chicago Magic Lounge is full of surprises around every corner. It's part museum, uh, just part interactive fun, part lounge, part bar, part entertainment venue, part theater, part uh, everything, but it's all dedicated to the history of Chicago-style magic. While they're unable to operate as normal during the pandemic, they are offering virtual pop-up magic shows until they can once again welcome in guests. When the shutdown happened, we started doing um, virtual shows. Uh, we do a couple a week or one a week, and then we also offered private virtual shows where people can invite anyone they want from around the country, around the world, and uh, we have live magicians performing. Um, now, because we are able to have some people in the space, limited amount, we can actually do it from here. So we have magicians performing behind the bar and on the stage, and we tape it live, and they interact um, with the audience on Zoom. If you're looking for a quirky, cool, and locally focused neighborhood to explore in Chicago, Andersonville should be at the top of your list. Okay guys, thank you so much for traveling with me through Andersonville. Now if you want even more recommendations on what to eat, see, and do in Chicago, then you have to check out my Chicago Neighborhood Guide. I'm going to link it in the description of this video. And if you want to explore even more of Chicago's neighborhoods, then you've got to check out my Chicago Neighborhood series. I'm going to put it right on over here. <laughs> and to connect even outside of YouTube, make sure that you are following me on Instagram at Ali Pierce. And for more travel videos just like this one, you can subscribe to my channel and hit that little bell to get a notification when a new video goes live. And yep, I think that's it. Stay tuned for my next neighborhood because we are traveling somewhere super fun. Bye guys. <laughs>